Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know I took an exquisite X5, a 50-foot catamaran, and sailed it from Cape Town, South Africa, across the equator, all the way to the Caribbean. It was an amazing adventure, and in this episode, we finished that passage from St. Helena Island to Fernando de Nerona, which is a Brazilian island, and this island is breathtaking. And I've never ever seen so many dolphins in one place in all my life. It was crazy. We explore Fernando by dune buggy. We lose Steve, our most experienced catamaran sailor, but we gain a delivery captain who's done the Cape Town to Caribbean passage 30 times. Crazy. Anyways, you don't want to miss this episode, so stay tuned. Before we go any further, I just want to give a special shout out to the patrons that support the channel, many of whom have been supporting this channel since long before I was doing these transatlantic sailing voyages. And then in this particular voyage, I had these sponsors jump on board to help defer the cost of me flying halfway around the world, only to get on a catamaran and sail almost halfway around the world, all while I had to leave my regular paying job. Thanks so much. I couldn't have done it without you, and hopefully you enjoy this episode. We anchor and hoist the sail. Here we are about halfway through our sailing passage to Fernando de Nerona, and the days were just beautiful, like this. Beautiful sunsets, beautiful sunrises, pretty much sunny all day. And on top of that, we had beautiful evenings because it was pretty much clear you could see the stars. And I gotta say, if you've never been out in the middle of the ocean, well, one day when you get to do that, you're gonna be blown away by the stars. It's so dark out there, you can't see your hand in front of your face, and therefore you see millions of stars. In fact, I'll show you some footage where we're at night and I'm actually filming the stars, but the mast and the sail is actually in the way. And the only reason you even know it's there is because it blots out the stars. So check that out. But I gotta say, some of my most favorite times was sailing at night, especially when you're by yourself, just staring up at the stars. Of course, the longer you look, the more you're gonna see shooting stars and you can see the satellites moving through the sky. It's amazing. Again, feels like Groundhog Day. Perfectly sunny, well, sunny with cloudy periods. Again, we got the spinnaker running. We haven't changed a thing other than the wind angle, whether we're running straight downwind or whether we're running you know, off the wind just a bit. We can do that with this. We can just move the uh, spinnaker around a bit. But one thing we have to keep in mind, something I'm gonna just mention to you guys, if you're doing this sort of passage where you're on a spinnaker the whole time, it's very easy, of course, good motion and uh, you don't have to do much, just sit there and ride it downwind, but you have to look out for chafe. Prime example, this little rope line here was actually connecting our block down here. I'll show you. This block down here was originally connected to the uh, strut here by this line. And luckily we caught it before it snapped that this was actually starting to chafe through. So what we've been doing, this happened a couple few days ago, I just didn't get around to filming it. But what we do now every day is we go around and check all the blocks and make sure that none of the lines uh, that are connecting the spinnaker to our boat and the one at the top is not chafing. And luckily Sean has a camera mounted to the top of his mast that angles down towards the sail. So what we can do, it's kind of a wide angle, kind of a GoPro type of uh, camera. What we do is we lower the sail a bit and we can see on the camera the, the, the uh, spinnaker halyard. We let it out a bit and we look at the, the line to make sure it's not chafing up there. Otherwise, the only other way to do it is to collapse the spinnaker down on your deck, inspect the line, and then put it back up again, which is kind of, you know, kind of a pain. But, uh, gotta say, spinnaker is definitely the way to go if you're gonna do any downwind long passages like this. This one's gonna be about a 12-day passage, then we'll probably spend three-ish, maybe four, it always ends up being longer than I expect, days in that uh, island in Brazil, and then 12 more days to uh, Barbados. That's the plan, anyway and hopefully most of it will be downwind. And then we get to use this wonderful parasailer, the spinnaker. One good uh, little diagnostic this boat has is it actually knows the water temperature. And if I zoomed out more, you'd see it's started way down. What was the lowest we were at when we were near? 40. 47? 40. No, 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 it was like 48. 48, 47. And now we're at 79.91, so definitely swimmable if we could just slow the boat down. <laughs> okay, after five continuous days of sailing with our parasailer here, we decided to take it down because there's all sorts of squall lines back there. 
and over there we're pretty much surrounded by squall lines and we're afraid we got about 18 to 20 knots of consistent wind with a squall coming through in the middle of the night it's almost dark that uh, really could get super windy and then in the middle of the night when it's dark we're gonna have to take down this beast so just to be safe we're gonna put up our uh, our screecher instead and be a little a uh, little safer now I'm gonna give these boys a hand okay they've decided they don't need me they want to do it just the two of them so I get to film so there you go I get to be the cameraman while they douse this okay the first thing we're doing is we're taking the uh, guide down as tight as we can to the deck as you can see and then what we're gonna do is blow the blow the sheet the spinnaker sheet over here <laughs> that's the that's the signal the signal to blow the sheet there we are and now collapses and uh, Steve here pulls down. There we go. Toss the parachute. Neil gives him this signal to drop the halyard and then uh, still a bit of a, a fight to get this thing down. Uh, and down it comes. In this amount of wind, I think this would still be a bit of a challenge for just a, a sailing couple, but it can be done, obviously. You run back there, you release the line, one person kind of holds onto it till the other person gets back, and, uh, and then you work together. So uh, a bit of a challenge, but not impossible for a cruising couple. So once we get this uh, parasailer stowed away, the next thing is we're gonna put out the Screecher, which is a big sail as well. It's like a big Genoa, and uh, we'll fly with that all night. Just, just that, no mainsail, because the mainsail will flop around. We want to get a decent sleep, so yeah. So we're almost uh, mission accomplished. All right, next thing is this creature comes out on a starboard tack. That's good. Yeah. Greg's the out guy. I'm the out guy. Out. Oh. Out. 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 Get that out. Send. Send it out. <laughs> good. Good job, guys. Nice How work. Long did that take? Not very long. Less than, yeah, less than. Making it, <laughs> making it look harder than it was. Yeah. He was making it look as if he was doing all the work. He was ordering you around a bit, wasn't he? Was he? <laughs> right. So let's just set the record okay. straight. This guy's a <laughs> wanker. Oh, I can't. Okay. I put it <laughs> you know I'm gonna have to beat that out. So how many days in a row did we have the uh, spinnaker or the parasailer? Five and a half? So five and a half days spinnaker run. Yeah, Fantastic. not bad. And we'll put it back up tomorrow, right? After we're sure Absolutely. that we don't have yeah, a squall. We're just, we're just, uh... As soon as we've had breakfast about midday, it'll go, <laughs> it'll go up. Once we feel motivated again. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it back up. Days, that's what we need. It is definitely the best way to sail downwind, but we didn't want to risk it at night with a with yeah. a possible squall, right? So. It seemed comfortable up to about 24, 25 knots of wind. Oh, yes. of true wind. Yeah. Uh, our concern is that a squall could come through with more than that, and then in pitch black, we'd be on it all, all hands on deck. Yeah, yeah. Deck yeah. Trying to try Do, to have a fire drill. Yeah, and th 30 knots of wind, which right. would suck. Yeah. All right. There's a birdie. There's a birdie. Uh, Real bird. First birdie I've seen for three days. Yeah. Uh, it's just temporarily disappeared. Sure, it wasn't a massive flying fish. Yeah, it was a stormy <laughs> well, after a, after a maneuver like that, I think it's time, time to celebrate. Time for a beer. Oh yes, beer time. <laughs> the little tendrils of destruction. Yeah. There be dragons. Yeah, it's probably good we brought down the spinnaker when we did. It's looking more and more ominous. Aye, the clouds are thickening up. <laughs> yeah. And behind is also looking pretty not lovely. We're still doing six to eight. Yeah. The speed hasn't gone down a lot. There's our speed. Where's the speed? Are they right now? Seven point two, seven point seven, six point five. Sort of surf. We're expecting another five knots of wind tonight, so it'll pick back a bit more. Nice. Are you feeling more secure with this set setup than we had before? A little bit? Well, it got sketchy for me at night with the parasailer. Yeah. I mean, the problem is it's pitch black, no moon, and then all of a sudden you get 25 knots. <laughs> and the wind increases, and is it a squall or is it. Yeah, is it that just a, a puff? Yeah. I mean, so. now we're safe. I mean, we know this can handle. And we can we can roll it in real quick, right? So that's. that's yeah, we've already had this up to almost 30 knots. So. Oh, yeah. So we're not worried now. Awesome.
We'll sleep soundly. Okay, this is the second night. We ju I just finished my night shift and we we're taking down the parasailer and put up the screecher yet again two nights in a row. Yesterday night, if I showed you this footage, was because we had some squall lines coming up behind us. And tonight was is because we're having 25 to 30 knots. I'm gonna show you a predict wind here. And that's the predict wind of where we are, right here and overnight, and that's the gusts. Red is red is intense, so we didn't want to leave our parasailer up overnight and risk having it blow out or having to have uh, all hands on deck at two in the morning. So, better safe than sorry, and we're still moving along at six to eight knots with just the one screecher up. So that's not bad, not bad at all. Anyways, my shift is over, and I'm gonna go to bed soon. Ciao for now. Sean's been wondering because there's been some stuff showing up on the deck. We didn't know what it was from. We were worried it was from the sail. And that was, where was that hiding? It was behind here. In behind our, so our we're, cover. I don't know. There's little black dots all over the area. Good three area. and a half meters up. And it must have, whoever was on duty must not have noticed it because it flew right over their head and got yeah, stuck in Stuck in the, in the uh, our convertible roof. If you ever noticed the previous episodes, we usually have this in the middle of the day, we have this kind of uh, bimini up. Oh, All right, we're putting it right they're down. putting it up right now. Oh, all that fish stuff's coming down on me. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> all right, so then they're gonna put the in, the in the daytime we put it up to get out of the sun, and then at night to stargaze we take it down. I'm forward, you're forward. That's a nice feature. Isn't that pretty awesome? So with relative ease, within moments you can go from a convertible to a hard, to a quasi hard top, so you're out of the sun. This boat has everything. Very impressed. Okay, this storm was coming up behind us. We saw it on the radar. We thought, let's just take the sails down and actually motor back into it so we can clean the boat. Because <laughs> tomorrow we're going to get to this island in Brazil and we want to wash the boat anyway. Right here, this is uh, just as easy. First time this boat's really going to get a good rainstorm. Yeah, everybody on Predict Wind is going to say, hey wait, they're turning around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's wrong? They changed their mind. So that is our radar that shows the blob in front of us. Is the uh, storm that we are about to see? Aim for the blob. We're aiming for. We really, really want a deluge of water. So, it sounds weird that that's what we want. Do you think that? Do you think that YouTube would um, would take away all of your funding if you right now said car wash? <laughs> do, 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 do. Talking about the car wash. <laughs> I don't think that would infringe any copyright because nobody's going to recognize that song from us singing it. Uh, you're funny though. Anything to try and get me demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. <laughs> uh, so it's coming down. Getting that boat clean for us. Wish this big huge dark squall over here would have us, but no, some got some stuff coming up behind, so cleaning her boat for free. And of course these two just dancing away. <laughs> Wash. Okay, we have a little uh, time crunch on our hands. We've got the uh, parasailer up because clearly we go a lot faster when we have the parasailer up. Winds are going to be a little bit high for the parasailer, but we want to try and push it during the daytime hours because we have how many hours? But we want to get there on Saturday, right? We have 56 hours? I, I believe. Uh, I'll let them finish right. with that. F 57 hours until darkness on Saturday evening and if we can maintain an average of above seven knots we will be able to arrive in the anchorage with light which you want which we want yeah. it's better to arrive yeah. at, not you know it's not nice to arrive at an anchorage you've never anchored at right uh, at night right so we're gonna try and get in there before so we're gonna, dark we're gonna press, on Saturday we're right? pressing on and bending on all sails laddie <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the plan let's keep this momentum going
Okay, this 66 meter uh, fishing vessel just passing by us, about two nautical miles. That's the closest boat we've seen in this whole passage. And uh, what's it called? Montefero. We talked to them on the VHF radio just to make sure they were going to pass to our stern since we're sailing. It's pretty exciting in the middle of the ocean. You don't see a lot of boats, and when you do, they're usually like so far away you can barely make them out. But uh, yeah. Okay, it's June 29th. We made land ho in a Brazilian island called Fernando de Norona, I believe is the way it's pronounced. You can see it off in the distance there. It's the first we noticed it. So land ho. We got a bit of a windstorm coming up just as we're getting close to the island. Thirty and a half knots? That was the max that I saw so far. This is 11 days of sailing since St. Helena, as far as we can tell. Uh, the, the days all sort of blend together, so it's hard to keep track, but we think it's been 11 days of sailing, and we are just about to make it to a Brazilian island called Fernando de Norona. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, not an island I've heard too many people stop at, but it's an island that we needed to drop Steve off, so we sort of just picked this island because it's on the way to the Caribbean. So yeah, don't know what to expect. We are pretty close. I'll turn the camera around. That's what it looks like. Let me zoom in a bit. There you go. Very unique steep mountain over here, right there. That doesn't look like something you could really walk up too steep for that, but uh, should be pretty impressive when we get up close and personal. You guys are all excited because they just saw a hammerhead shark. Supposedly it goes from 2,000 feet to just about 200 feet right here. There's the island. And uh, so clearly we're back into some aquatic wildlife, which we haven't seen in days and days and days when you're in thousands of feet of water. Nothing really lives out there. So we're excited to see maybe some dolphins. Clearly they just saw a hammerhead shark, which I was on the wrong side of the boat to see it. And uh, there's a lot more fish and flying fish around here too, so should be exciting. So we don't know too much about this island. Uh, kind of a last minute change. We were gonna hit Brazil in the mainland, uh, but this has, <laughs> the other place was gonna be a kind of a marshy, swampy kind of area, and we were afraid about mosquitoes and all sorts of bugs. This island's out on our, more on our direct path to the Caribbean, so we thought we'd try it. Uh, Steve has to get off and fly home. His wife kind of researched it a bit. There are supposedly five flights a day from mainland Brazil to here. So clearly, the Brazilians must use this as a vacation spot if there's that many flights in and out. From the view of the island, it looks just green and lush. It looks like something out of King Kong would live in. But uh, no, no houses or buildings that I can see, although on the far, far end, I do see a few little buildings. So uh, clearly it is inhabited, but it's probably all on the lee side of the island, which is what we're doing now. We're gonna sail around to the lee side, and that's where the anchorage is. And checking in is a little unclear for us. We don't know if there's a port control you're supposed to radio in, or if you're just supposed to anchor, put your queue flag up, and dinghy to shore, and try and find customs and immigration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna radio on 16 and ask for port control, and say we're here to check in and see what they say. If nobody responds, then we're just gonna wing it. We're gonna anchor, put the queue flag, and go in. So we'll let you know how it works out. It might be too windy to hear me, but you gotta check out these sites. Look at how close we are to this mountain. Then we got this beach over here. And these party boats over here, you can hear the music. Very cool. So neat. Coming into this anchorage. We're saying it doesn't really provide you a ton of wind protection since the wind is coming from there. But uh, yeah, there we go, hooked on the bridle. Right in front of this party beach. I don't know if you can hear over the wind, but there's music pumping out of that place. Okay, everybody swam for the first time off the boat here in Brazil. Water's beautifully warm. Let me go check it out. The boys are on the front of the boat for some reason. First time the whole crew has swam. Here we are. <laughs> Captain Sean. Awesome. Okay, we come to shore. It's after 6 p.m. So we know full well there's no way we're gonna be able to sign in today. And it's Saturday, so Brazil's probably very Catholic, so I bet Sunday's not open either. So we might be kind of like just taking our chances going to shore on a weekend, but uh, our boat's out there 
and we hear music and a lot of people up at the top of this hill. See that? Some sort of uh, party going on. So we'll see what happens. Okay, sounds like this party was just winding down as we showed up. The music sort of came to an end and now everybody's over here getting on a bus. We don't have any local currency and all these food vendors that were set up here probably only take local currency, so we may be out of luck. So we're gonna walk around a bit, see the area, see what we can see for tomorrow when we come back. We've gotta figure out too where we gotta sign in for customs and immigration. Oops. Mucho gusto. <laughs> so we're taking a cab. Uh, the real, you said? Yeah, three hours. Look at the bus, how full it is. Holy crap, they were like wedged in like sardines. <laughs> There's dolphins all around our boat. They're little baby ones though, they're little tiny things. Oh, there it is. <laughs> So you think those are spinner dolphins? Yeah. Right here. Oh yeah! Woof, 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 woof. Look at these Look guys. Look at these ones. Woohoo! Oh, here they come, yeah. Right towards the boat. Yeah. They're coming right here. What is he saying? He's saying I cannot. He's telling me I can't get in the water with him. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, look at the little babies. Oh, there was. Wow. That one baby is just going crazy. Maybe it's more than one. More dolphins. Going all around both sides. They're everywhere. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. They're over here and they're over in there. It's crazy how many dolphins are here. Now they look really small. They're spinner dolphins, but they some of them, it's like a baby sanctuary here. Yeah, the black ones over there are definitely spinners. These gray ones that went by might be slightly different. <laughs> nice! That's the same guy, isn't it? Oh yeah. He is into it. He's like, we're gonna smash! <laughs> Bunch of party boat people going by. All right. The boys are going partying. We're gonna head over to that beach over there. Have a good one. See ya! They're gonna head to the beach just over there beside that mountain. One thing I've learned on this voyage is when those guys go to town, they like to spend money. They go to restaurants, bars, they just round after round. I don't have the pocketbook to keep up with those guys, so I'm more than happy to stay here on the boat and uh, have a chill evening while they go out to who knows where till who knows when. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be productive. I've got my little laptop set up over there under the laundry. So I'm going to uh, do some editing, get some of this footage, these hundreds of hours of footage and start going through and finding out what's good, and, you know, categorizing it and all that. And uh, yeah, get those videos ready for when I get home and have some actual internet. There is so far no good internet on this island, just like there wasn't any good internet on St. Helena Island. It seems to be the kind of the thing. If it's a tiny island in the middle of the Atlantic, don't expect to get good internet. Now they're going into town. It's only 2.40 in the afternoon and they'll be there all evening. They're gonna look around, see if they see any restaurants or bars that actually have good internet, but I wouldn't hold my breath. So that's the plan of attack. I'm gonna stay here and chill. Easy around the pocketbook. Everybody around here drives these dune buggies. I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if they're just cheap around here for these or 
that's all there is to rent. Okay, we finally got checked in properly. Uh, we had to meet the port captain here at this brown building at the top of the staircase hill. The guy is super nice. He doesn't speak English very well, but he used the Google Translate to get the point across. Uh, his name is Marco, super nice guy. Got it organized for us that immigration, customs, federal police, everybody showed up here at his office and we got cleared in. Um, word to the wise though, this is a high-end kind of tourist island for Brazilians and they have all sorts of tourism fees because there's a national park on the island and stuff. It was, we were only theoretically here two days. We said we checked in Sunday because we kind of came late, late, late Saturday. Uh, Sunday, Monday, we're leaving Tuesday. So really two full days here on the island. And the fees are per day, per person, plus an anchorage fee and all that stuff. It ended up being about 1400 um, their local currency, which American, it's about 3.8, divide that by 3.8. Canadian is probably divide that by 2.4 or 2. Point, it's so, as you can see, we're only here two days and uh, it's a boatload of money. If we'd been here a week, a month, it would have just kept going up, going up, going up. So if you're coming here, just keep in mind, you're gonna need like, a lot of money to stay here. But other than that, it is a beautiful island. Supposedly we talked to some locals, they love it here because there's no crime. And I think a lot of these fees are only if you're a boater. Uh, I think if you fly in and, and took a hotel and all that, you know, that would all be included in your, in your ticket you know when you come in there's probably some tax that's included but it's part of your airline ticket I doubt you pay it per day if you flew flew into this island but who knows I know when they, you're a boater they're charging you every day you're anchored out there so keep that in mind number one in provisioning is uh, bank so we don't need the gas we don't need a gas can going into the bank <laughs> yeah we're gonna be we are provisioning for the next 12 days of sailing and maybe beyond. <laughs> we're planning to open our own supermarket. <laughs> the choices are slim, but we're doing okay. So this nondescript building that you would never know is a grocery store is what you just saw inside. Tiny, and this is actually the bigger of the two we found on this island. And like anything that's island living, everything here is gonna be crazy expensive. I don't know how the Brazilians can afford it. If I if I find it expensive, they must really find it expensive. So, but what are you gonna do? They're on an island and everything that they eat gets shipped in on container ships and uh, marked up probably about 500%. So get used to it. Here we are on our last night before we leave tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, the new captain's coming on board around 12.30. And uh, so we're spending a uh, last evening at this bar. And let me flip the camera around and show you the view up on this hill. Buggy. There's the doom buggy. Cobblestone Road. So this is the beast that we just drove in, four of us. Okay, this time. I'm in the back with Sean, and it's way more fun in the back. You're hanging on to this roll bar. I uh, know, I haven't tried the front yet, so I can't oh, say. It, it feels way more fun back here. It's more of an adrenaline rush, because you're <laughs> almost flipping out the back of this dune buggy, so. Well, it's right behind us. It's yeah. Not very far I wasn't holding on at first. I was going to film, and we were going up a hill on this cobblestone road, and had I not been holding on, I would have been out the back for sure, so. Back at San Miguel restaurant, first place we were at, and they have ice cream here. We just took it back to where your boat in the pouring rain, and where I was riding on the back. Not a whole lot of fun. Not a whole lot of fun. Hello, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. This is July 2nd. This is the day we're going to be leaving the Brazilian island, Fernando de Norona. And uh, yeah, we're waiting for our paid captain to arrive and then we're gonna have to pick him up. Steve is leaving, but for before he leaves, we found out, he dove yesterday on our anchor and he found out our anchor is actually wrapped around a rock. So he's gonna be the nice guy who goes out there with his dive fins and dive down and we're gonna release the tension on the chain and then he's gonna dive down and try and lift the anchor over the rock because once he's gone, we were thinking it might be a pain in the butt to get the uh, anchor up and he's by far the best diver. So there he is in the water right there. I don't know if you can hear me that well over the wind. It is crazy windy. Everywhere we've been, it's crazy windy. Um, and if you're ever wondering why I didn't do that many drone flights other than St. Helena, 
it's because it was all these crazy windy like this so that's the reason so don't be disappointed if after the series you're like wow you brought your drone and you really didn't use it that much I can't control the wind so there you go so there he is swimming out with a little flotation thing tied to him so that there's a fair bit of boat traffic around here and he doesn't want some boat driving right over top of him so he smartly tied that flotation buoy to himself so he's gonna dive down then we're gonna motor forward take some take some uh, pressure off the chain and then uh, we'll go from there okay so he signaled us to move forward we took the uh, pressure off the chain he's diving again just a little burst forward just a five seconds we're done just just switch it just, just let it drift neutral. back so now it's uh supposedly unhooked from the rock we're gonna just let it drift back and see if it resets properly looks good so in a place like this where there's patches of sand with intermittent rocks it's always good to uh after you think you've set your anchor to just go out with your snorkel and look down in, in this beautiful clear water you can definitely see to the bottom and just check to make sure your anchor is actually set in sand and not just hooked on a rock which is what happened to us we didn't notice it right away when the boat <clears throat> stayed where we needed it to be we just assumed it was set until he went snorkeling and saw that it was actually hooked around a rock so it might have been challenging to get that anchor up with the windlass had we not known that it would have probably been yanking and yanking wondering why it doesn't want to come up and then we would have then had to dive on it and you don't want to do it when you've already taken up all your chain and you're really hanging right up and over top of your anchor so lesson to uh, all of us okay our new uh, hired captain to take us the rest of the way has arrived Valentin he's already hard at it trying to check out the systems he wants to make sure we uh, service the generator before we go in fact he wants more fuel than we already have we already have a bunch of jerry cans we had some empty ones he wants to max out the amount of fuel we're carrying because he says he's done this passage from Cape Town to the Caribbean 30 times and he says there's often times where during the uh, doldrums area near the equator he's had to motor for as much as seven days straight so uh, he says he can't have too much fuel and uh, we should trust him so here he is for Neil yeah what do you think maybe uh, 12 hours max on the engine when we ran out of Santa Lima those are your halyards and your top yeah yeah that's the spinnaker and the top that will come with. I mean, it's, it's not, we're not racing, so it's not going to be a big thing. It's my job to yell at Neil. Like you now have to call him a f***ing wanker. Like it's not going to work. It's not going to work. He's just going to ignore me. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's got to pick on somebody now. He can't pick on you. <laughs> He's stopping it. So, Steve is leaving now, officially, after he's done the tour with the boat with the new uh, delivery captain. And we're sad to see him go. He is the most experienced catamaran sailor we have on board. So. On Earth. On Earth. I mean, wait. Um, and you're not afraid to let us know that. <laughs> All right. It's been great. So with us losing Steve and getting a new crew member and leaving Fernando de Nerona, this is a perfect spot for us to cut this and call it the end of the episode. We'll get on to the next part of the voyage in the next episode. But you will get to see Steve one more time in the next episode because I do an interview with him, a very detailed interview about his thoughts of this exquisite X5 after sailing it for, I guess, around 4,000 nautical miles so far what his thoughts are, and his thoughts are most important of the crew because him and his wife lived on a catamaran for seven years. So if anybody knows the ins and outs of a catamaran and what he likes or doesn't like about this catamaran, it would be him. Uh, clearly, I love this boat, but then again, I've never owned a catamaran before, so uh, it's, I might be easy to impress. So check out that episode next if you're into buying catamarans. He has a lot of thoughts. He's from the performance side of catamarans. His previous catamaran was a performance cat, and his next uh, catamaran is also going to be a performance cat. So it's a slightly different market than this one. This one's more of a cruising cat. It's very comfortable. It's got all the amenities, all the air conditioners, all that stuff, but with that comes weight and therefore it doesn't sail as fast as the boat he's used to having in the past. But he definitely likes it, I will give you that heads up. But check out that episode if you are interested in catamarans, he has a lot of good information. So, hopefully you like this episode, if so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future episodes, and until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. Okay, welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I think we're day six, maybe day seven of sailing from Namibia to, oh sorry, from St. Helena Island to, I'm all confused. These are all blending together. 